Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video, and today we are going to be looking at the 2021-22 I guess, redistricting process, and today we'll be taking a look at one of the biggest states in America for both population, size, and of course redistricting, and that is the state of Texas. Texas is absolutely massive, and I did spend quite a long time making these maps. Luckily for me, the precinct size in, uh, the precincts in Texas are pretty big, so... It's not like California where you have a ridiculous amount of small precincts. Texas, the precincts are pretty big, but it still is a big state, and these maps took a while. So before I get started, please do leave a like. I did make three pretty crazy, or two cr crazy maps in this video, one fair map. Uh, so please do leave a like uh, if you like what you see here, and subscribe to the channel if you are not already. We just hit 5K. Let's try to get to 6K as soon as we can, or even 5.5K. That would be a cool milestone. Also, do follow me on Twitter. I'm at UEP underscore YouTube on both Twitter and Instagram. Instagram, most I, I mostly post uh, maps, redistricting maps, and y if you do follow me on Instagram, you'll get a uh, an advanced look at the maps I post. So, sometimes I'll post a map on Instagram, then a week later, it'll be features on my channel or something. Um, so, yeah, and then on Twitter, I tweet more than once a day to see my uh, latest political takes, and I guess I'm going a bit more mask off. You are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter. I would highly appreciate it if you did that, and if you do, uh, I will follow you back, just let me know, and uh, that would be cool. Trying to hit a 1,000 on Twitter, I'm getting decently close Instagram. I'm, I started really posting last month, so I'm trying to hit it hard on Instagram. But we're going to get started with this video. So Texas is um, a state that the Republican Party has complete control of. They can really do whatever they want here as long as it follows the Voting Rights Act. So they do have to have a good amount of majority Hispanic districts. They also have to have, I believe, at least two majority black districts. And a couple or uh, more, um, uh, you know, just majority minority districts. Now, that being said, the GOP does have a bit to to work with in Texas, and they are expected to gain at least two seats, potentially f uh, up to five. I'd say right now, I think the GOP is going to net three seats in redistricting in Texas. Although it could be more if, if they win a couple more seats that are competitive, that may be Democratic leaning in twenty twenty two. But first, this is a crazy de a hypothetical gerrymander that the Democrats would make if a they had complete control of the state, which they don't. And if the voting rat and if the voting rights act did not exist, so um, I we can turn on I guess turn turn off um, map colors. So this is the city of El Paso, as you can see right here. This is El Paso. It is one of the largest cities in Texas. And the county of El Paso actually, the county itself has I think eight hundred thousand people, and it is in it is ridiculously Hispanic. It is you know basically seven eighths Hispanic, close to that, and. I cracked El Paso in half, which you cannot do legally because you because well, what the current map is 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 this the Democrats have one uh, vote sink in El Paso and it serves as a, as a VRA district, so you can't legally crack it pretty much. But in this hypothetical situation, it is cracked, uh, and then it does uh, it 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 and then the district after you know the super blue parts of El Paso, it does take in the um it does take in the more rural parts of. The area, especially the infamous Loving County, which I just want to shout out real quick. Loving County has 98 people. The smallest county in America, 98 people. Really cool, just thought I'd mention that, give it a shout out. It is, it is four precincts strong, and uh, it is a pretty cool county, I guess you could say, because it is the smallest in America. And then it takes in the super Republican city of Odessa, or Odessa, I guess I should say, um, which I always, uh, I, I managed to remember this because that's also said in Ukraine, but I would be totally forgetting that. If it was not in Ukraine, uh, and then we have the other half of El Paso. This crack just kind of goes across. There are some rural Hispanic areas down here that are pretty blue. Uh, then just some uh, rural areas up here, up to San Angelo, which I hadn't really heard of before I made this video or before I made these maps with Texas, but it seems like a decently red city. Uh, population, I think, of San Angelo is around a hundred thousand. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, Odessa, Odessa has a similar amount of people, so. Yeah, now, this district right here, super competitive seat that Joe Biden definitely would have lost in 2020 because I'm using 2016 presidential data. They have not released 2020 data for Texas yet, but you take in the blue areas of, um, what's this city? That's Eagle Pass. Yeah, I, I, knew, I knew there was a decently big city somewhere over there. Then you go kind of up to Laredo, which is the largest city in this district, is the main reason for its uh, Democratic lean. And other than that, it's it's pretty red and pretty rural. So that's a little, Laredo really makes it the, a Democratic district. Then you have some snake districts that, you know, kind of split um, McAllen, which is a pretty large city down here. McAllen, the city of McAllen. As you can see here, has 141,000 people, but 
the county that it is in, Hidalgo County, has is basically big enough to house a whole congressional district. So it's, it's a really big county, and it's a super democratic. So uh, that I was able to crack into essentially three districts, as you can see, to make these more democratic. Corpus Christi is a, a more Republican city. They have uh, there are some blue parts, but the suburbs and exos are super red. So you you do have that going, but you do you are able to essentially crack these areas into, in, in, into three democratic districts. Then you have just some you know kind of suburban. Uh, seats uh, that you can make in uh, San Antonio. This suburban seat would be near. Clinton would have won it by, I think, two in 2016. Biden definitely would have won it by more. Same with this seat over here. Uh, and you just kind of crack San Antonio into two or three districts. Like, as you can see, this, the city itself cracked into these districts that kind of go up. This district right here is really ugly. It cracks San Antonio, then it goes all the way up to these rural areas that make it much more Republican. Uh, so, yeah, then you have this seat over here, which just kind of takes the San Antonio suburbs then goes up and grabs some Houston suburbs, so it's kind of a, you, you have the blue suburbs of San Antonio, then you go, grab some red rural areas up here, grab the Austin suburbs, and then just you get, get some more red areas, so it's a Democratic-leaning seat. Then the most uh, Democratic seat in this area is a likely Democrat seat, I think Clinton plus 13 or 14, that grabs a big chunk of Austin, then just goes up to some more rural Republican areas, grabs a couple of Democratic precincts in the Temple area, um, and yeah, then you have Waco, which uh, is in this district. It would actually... Uh, I did kind of waste a bit of Waco. I think I could have done a better job with that because you do have a lot of Democratic precincts in Waco that you could have grabbed, but uh, I made this map a while ago, so I'm not entirely sure what I could do now, but you have, some, you have a red district here. Houston, I Houston, I did last. There actually are... You actually could draw a better map. This uh, this map looks ridiculous, but you could draw for like two more Democratic seats because I forgot to crack Houston and it just kind of wasted it. I kind of made it one suburban seat and then I made uh, like some safe seats in Houston that I think I could have done better on, but whatever. Still a pretty crazy map. Then you have the seat that goes on grabs a lot of the Houston Democratic areas down here that are majority black. Then goes across the coast and grabs the Democratic precincts in, I forgot the name of the county, I'm going to uh, cheat, Jefferson County, that is the more competitive county in uh, South Texas, of course. So, yeah, then you have uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area where you have suburb shifting to the left, like this uh, Fort Worth in this district right here that would be keeping it narrowly blue and trending to the left. So these seats over here would be trending blue anyways, even though they're super competitive and could hypothetically slip. Then you have a Plano-based district here. Plano is another city that's trending blue recently, uh, even in a pretty bad election for Democrats back on May 1st, where they Republicans did better than expected in a suburban Dallas seat for Congress. Uh, this city of Plano did actually elect, actually did elect a Democratic uh, city council and a Democratic mayor, I believe. Um, so... Yeah, then you have this just that stretches across, grabs the Dallas uh, blue areas, then just stretches across to these more Republican areas uh, in the east. So that's the crazy map of Texas, the Democrats. It's not legal. The population deviation is kind of bad. There's a district that has 10,000 too few, too many people, and then you have kind of this seat over here that has 8,000 too few people. So, you know, it's a it's a cool map to look, to look at, but it would never, ever pass. And if it does pass, I will fill myself... Um, uh, Fortnite dancing on the Golden Gate Bridge, we'll put it that way. Alright, so we are now going to look at a crazy map that is also not going to pass because, not because the Republicans don't want to pass this map, I mean, I, they definitely wish that they could because they do have control of the state, but it is not legal, it does not have enough majority minority districts, and thus is uh, would not even be considered. So, to take a look at the Democratic vote sinks, you have a safe seat in the Rio Grande Valley, uh, right here for the Democrats, that kind of grabs, you know, I... I, I cracked El Paso, but I grabbed the more blue areas of El Paso, went down here, precinct by precinct, grabbed these uh, super blue areas over here in the in this area, and then I went down to the, uh, um, uh, to the I believe, the Eagle Pass area, if I recall correctly. Uh, Eagle Pass, yes, I grabbed the Eagle Pass as well to make a super blue district here. Then I kind of packed all of McAllen and Hidalgo County to make a super Democratic district here. Then I made this seat up here that, go, that grabs kind of the blue parts of Corp Corpus Christi and the McAllen uh, metro area to make that a super blue seat. And then I did make a, a Democratic vote sing in San Antonio. This actually would have been likely in 2016. I'll show you the, I'll show you the data. This actually would have been a, kind of competitive. It would have been likely. would have Then would have won it by 15, which is still technically competitive because it's under 20. But it would be trending blue, and Biden would have won it by like 20 or 21 percent. Uh, Houston, I was able to pack the Democrats into one seat there by... Uh, packing and cracking there. Then Dallas, I also packed the Democrats into one seat there, although I, I think I actually could have eliminated the Dallas seat because I had two red seats, super red seats surrounding it, but that would have been really complicated. So I just packed the Democrats into these seats. 
Then for these Republican seats, you can uh, kind of see what I did here. I uh, packed and cracked, as they like to say. I uh, cracked San Antonio into these uh, essentially four districts, as you can see right here. And then same thing with Austin. I cracked Austin into uh, four districts, or yeah, that's I think three districts, I guess you could say. Oh uh, yeah, three districts, like because they didn't really need to make a Democratic seat in Austin. So uh, yeah, and then I went up here, uh, and Amarillo is a city that you know it's super red, like it's red. It's not. It's like there. There are Democratic areas of it that I think are majority black, but you know, it's still. Um, it's still a. It, it, it's still a city that I. I guess was kind of worth cracking because it is trending to the left, although very, very slowly. So I just thought I'd do that. And you know, look at these terrible districts that go all the way from Amarillo to the Dallas, uh, to the deep blue parts of Dallas is over here as, uh, that I grabbed. Um, also, I'll tell you a fun story uh, while I wrap up this map. So there is, you might have noticed, if you're an election geek like me, you, you might have noticed that there is a v random Democratic precinct um, in uh, this uh, area right here. And this precinct is actually, I'll, I'll tell you a story. This precinct is kind of, if Hispanics want to live upstate in Texas, they move to this precinct. And the, it also has a significant Asian population as, for whatever reason, uh, the, the town that is in this precinct um, cactus, yeah, that, that's what it's gonna be called, cactus, um, for some reason, it is kind of a, a spot for Burmese immigrants, this is super random, but it's become kind of a spot for for Burmese immigrants, which means it's surrounding, surrounded by super red precincts, but it's diverse enough to, I guess you could say, make a more, um, make a blue precinct in the, in the, in a sea of red, so just so I tell you that story, I find it interesting, but, now we're going to move on to an actual good-looking map, um, the free map of Texas that I'm pretty proud of. So, uh, using 2016 president, so Texas, it's super easy to make a map that's, that looks good, but has easily more Democratic seats than it ha should have. So, this map is cl is close than I would have liked. It's The the total is 20 uh, Republican seats, 18 Democratic seats using 2016 presidential data. So, for example, Joe Biden might have actually, he would have for sure lost this seat, he might have lost this seat as well. So that would give the uh, the GOP uh, two more seats. But on the other hand, uh, I think Biden probably would have carried these two Fort Worth seats and uh, in, in Arlington seats anyways because he did so well in the Dallas suburbs. He might have potentially carried this seat. Probably not, though. So, yeah. Now, the Rio Grande Valley, I was able to essentially make, you know, I made uh, five Democratic districts out of it, although this one definitely would have been won by Trump in 2020. This is 2016 presidential data. San Antonio, I put most of the blue parts into this one safe Democratic seat. Then kind of grabbed um, the rest and put it into another. Likely, you know, I think this is a 16-point Democratic seat. Then we have this kind of these suburbs in between Austin and San Antonio that, you know, you have the Austin suburbs. Then you grab a little bit of the San Antonio expert, uh, excerpts to make a Republican-leaning seat that will be trending blue. You have uh, these safe Republican seats we're not going to talk about too much. But then you have uh, four Houston seats, obviously. Then you have a suburban Houston seat that uh, G Greg Abbott would have won in 2014 by, like, 13%. And Hillary Clinton would have carried it by... A little bit in 2016 so yeah you have that then you have a similar seat up here that just is a little less blue but these would both be trending to the left anyways um and then you have a likely republican seat that would be trending red because this area is trending red by grabbing the blue parts of jefferson county uh and some houston suburbs but the coast is pretty red anyways so likely republican seat you, you have a, a dallas suburban seat that's actually kind of similar to the sixth district of texas but as you can see uh, there's a county split because Dallas, the Dallas County part of it is basically all Democratic precincts. The Fort Worth part of it is, uh, or Tarrant County part of it, I guess I should say, is is pretty competitive. And then the uh, Johnson and Ellis County uh, regions that are still, you know, Ellis County is still 170,000 people strong. And it's all in this district to make it competitive. And a slightly, you know, it's it's a Democratic-leaning district, but still a very competitive one at that. And then you have these two suburban seats that Clinton would have lost in uh, 2016, but I do think that Joe Biden would have carried them in 2020. So they're essentially toss-up leaning Democratic seats. Then what the GOP would have to worry about in the future is these two seats up here that were, oh, we can actually look at them, these, if we label it, let's just make sure we've got the right seats. These are the 32nd and the 30th district, we'll take a look at that. Um, oops, that district is not contiguous, I remember looking at that. Uh, the 32nd and the 30th district, the, the, the 32nd district would have been Trump was 16. The 30th district would have been Trump plus 11. 
And I bet you that in 2020, these seats would have been like something like Trump plus six and Trump plus 10. So, um, you know, these seats would be trending blue. Still be red for now, but they'd be trending blue, especially the Plano area in this uh, seat right here. Plano is shifting to the left rapidly, and um, these seats would be getting bluer. And this seat up here, the the, the Denton base seat, Denton, the city of Denton, is, is also getting bluer and bluer. Um, as you can see, the white voters in Texas are becoming a little more, in the suburbs are becoming, becoming more friendly to Democrats, and uh, Denton, uh, the city, again, trending blue. So this seat would, I think, become likely by 2024 or something. So the Dallas area, a region of concern for Republicans. But overall, I think this is a pretty good map. I think it looks good. It looks much better than the current map because Texas is among the most gerrymandered states in uh, in the, the country. So, um, yeah. Now, I guess that'll be it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please do leave a like. Comment down below what you think of this map, you know. Um, I don't live in Texas, so I might have made some minor mistakes with communities of interest, for example, but I hope you enjoyed this video, um, and I'll see you all in the next one.